All right, if you are uh, watching this video, then you have clicked on the help button for the multi land use uh, GIS import uh, BMP trains feature. Uh, my name is Mike Harden. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how to use this feature in the uh, BMP trains model. So um, first, uh, when you're when you're dealing with stormwater basins, it's it's very rare that you're going to come across a situation where you have a single land use throughout the entire basin. Uh, most most basins are going to have multiple land uses within them, and therefore it becomes appropriate to uh, determine an overall EMC value. Um, when you determine a new EMC value, you, you want to make sure that it's representative of the land uses that you that, that you have throughout, and, and this tool will, will allow you to do that. Um, one thing to note is that when you're calculating a new EMC, you shouldn't take just a straight average. It shouldn't be an area-weighted average. Um, you need to take into account the runoff potential characteristics of the site, um, and therefore it should be a flow-weighted average. Um, so for, uh, the, for the BMP trains model, the way this is calculated is by doing a, a, a flow-weighted average based on runoff coefficient and area. Uh, and of course the EMC corresponding to the um, appropriate land uses within the watershed. Uh, this, this will give a better representation of the overall EMC. Um, again, different uh, land use types are going to have different characteristics and so this will take that into account. So we're going to kind of uh, show how this is done by running through a quick example problem. Um, so for this, this is actually a uh, water quality retrofit located here in Central Florida. Uh, we're dealing with a lake that's impaired for nutrients. Um, a recent study was completed in 2012 which identified um, a outfall as the primary source of nutrients to this lake. Um, and, and, and that outfall basically takes runoff from a, from a just under 16 acre area uh, that, that, um, that has multiple land uses within. So um, uh, the, the kind of the setup of the site is there's a couple of swales that uh, run alongside of the road and then direct runoff to this outfall where water then goes straight into the lake without any treatment. Um, we want to reduce the pollutant loads in this outfall so we're going to look at using a modular wetland system for this. Um, we're also going to look at two different pollution control medias, um, a bold and gold with the efficiencies shown and then also a shale-based media, uh, which has the efficiencies as shown there. Um, this is a vegetation-enhanced um, BMP, um, and we're designing the system for a five-minute residence time. So uh, this here shows the uh, vicinity of the project. Um, the, uh, the red area uh, shows uh, what, the, what the basin is, um, and this is the lake of interest. This here shows a closer um, uh, uh, shot of the site, and so these orange lines here represent the roadside swales, and this here is the piped outfall which goes into the lake. Uh, this here shows the sub-basins for the outfall, so we have two different uh, modular wetland systems, uh, one that services uh, this larger basin here, and another one that services this basin. Um, this little area here is actually an orphan basin that um, belongs to this. So based on the drainage infrastructure, it, it, it ends up connecting these two. Um, this here shows the different land uses within um, the project area. So as you can see, we have multiple different land uses, some residential, some institutional, some open land, um, some uh, industrial. Um, so there's a number of different land uses within this uh, uh, project basin. And so this is typical of a, of, of a, of, of a, uh, a nutrient loading problem. Um, and here we show the soils within um, our project area. So the green there represents A, well draining soils. Uh, the yellow represents um, a mixed hydro group, uh, B and D. And then the um, brown represents C. Um, for the purposes of, of our modeling, we're going to assume that the um, BD soil group behaves as a C, um, and, 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 and that is because we're looking at an overall um, average annual um, uh, uh, nutrient loading, and sometimes the soils will behave as B, and sometimes they'll behave as D, and so we're going to um, take a value in between so that it more accurately represents how, this, how these soils will behave over the course of a year. 
Um, and then this here shows all of the impervious and directly connected impervious areas um, within the, the watershed. So these darker um, red areas are, are DCIA area, and then these kind of lighter pink areas are um, non-DCIA impervious areas. So uh, the, 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 the first part of using this feature is to use some, um, some form of GIS. Uh, I, I used ArcGIS for this, but you know, any, any GIS should, should work. Um, you have to use some geoprocessing tools. Um, so typically your, your soils and your land use are gonna be a, a part of a, a larger feature class. Um, and so you want to first clip that feature class down to the size of your overall project. Um, next, you want to use the intersection geoprocessing tool to perform an intersection between the soils and the land uses. Um, you want to take the resultant feature class and perform another intersection with the um, basins. And then you want to take the resultant uh, uh, feature class from, from that uh, geoprocessing and you want to perform a, ge or, excuse me, perform a union um, with the uh, impervious layer feature class. Um, once you've done all that, you want to export your attribute table um, from that new layer uh, into Excel and then uh, determine the curve number value uh, uh, separately before we bring it into BMP trains. So once I go through and do all of that geoprocessing, um, all of these uh, lines in here represent unique polygons uh, that represent a unique combination of land use, soils, um, basin ID and uh, impervious area. Um, so the uh, attribute table will look something like this, uh, where we have the flux code or the land use code, the area and acres, the land use code description, the hydro group, um, the basin name, and then um, the, the, the DCIA area. Um, one, one important thing to note is that for the purposes of the model, um, and, and, and I'll show this here in a minute, um, the DCIA area just simply needs to say yes or no. It's a DCIA or it's not a DCIA, um, and, then, and then the model will handle it appropriately. All right, and then so now we're going to jump over into the model so that I can show you how to input this data um, and, and, and how to use that feature within BMP trains. Okay, so um, I exported my attribute table from GIS into Excel, um, and this is what I'm left with. So I've reorganized the columns so that they're in the same order as um, what, what we need for the BMP trains model. So I have the catchment name, the, the flux code or the land use code, um, the flux description or land use description, my um, hydro group. Uh, curve number, whether or not it's a DCIA area, and then the um, associated area um, with that particular polygon. And one thing I do want to note real quick is that for your curve number, when you're looking at residential uh, medium density, you don't want to use the TR55 residential medium density um, land use code. Um, what you actually want to use, or excuse me, curve number, what you want to actually use is um, lawns in good conditions. And the reason for that is, is because when we did all of our geoprocessing earlier, we, we pulled out or we extracted all of the impervious and the DCIA areas. So really, we're only left with the pervious areas for, the, for these polygons. So the, uh, the curve numbers should represent those pervious areas, not an aggregate of the pervious areas and the impervious areas. So I'm going to set this table aside for a moment. We're going to go over to the BMP trains model and then um, start inputting the data so that uh, you can see how it's used. So uh, I have here the uh, latest version of the BMP trains model. Um, this is the um, start page here, so I'll just uh, click here to start. Um, first thing you want to do is input the name of your project. Um, so we'll just call this uh, multi land use example. Um, and we also want to specify our meteorological zone. Um, as I said before, we're in Orlando, so that's right here within zone two. Um, so we go select zone two. Um, the mean annual rainfall, we can look at the mean annual rainfall map. Uh, let me fix the zoom here. 
So we can look at the mean, mean annual rainfall map, look at an expanded central view. Um, here, we're right here in Orlando. The project's located about over here, which is right on the, the 50, um, 50, 50 inches line. So we'll input 50 inches here. Um, and then the uh, type of analysis that we're going to do for this is a um, specified removal efficiency where we want to get 40% removal of nitrogen and 45% removal of phosphorus. Um, so next we need to go over and input our watershed characteristics. Um, so, so this here is, is, where, is where the, um, the multi-land use comes into play. Um, so still the first thing we want to do is select our configuration and, and for this one we have two um, catchments in parallel. So I'll just select C, two catchments in parallel. Um, and then on our um, catchment names we'll call this top one north catchment. And then we'll call the second one south catchment. And then for these drop down menus here for the pre and post land use, we're actually going to specify that based on the GIS data that we exported. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, select the GIS import data option. And so you'll do that for the pre and post for both our, our north catchment and our south catchment. Um, the other thing we want to do is over here on the right side is we want to select use uh, uh, the import GIS concentrations. So we'll select that on both. And then, um, and then we're going to go over to the GIS land use data um, worksheet. So we'll click on this button and it takes us over here. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. So here is everything um, that uh, here's where we need to put everything that we exported from GIS. Um, I'll also note that it's possible to overwrite the EMC for any individual um, polygon that we have on there, um, but uh, that's obviously a discussion to be had with uh, the regulatory agencies. Um, so I'm going to go over to our table from before. Um, I will select all of that. Uh, I'll just do a simple copy. And then go back to the BMP trains model, and I'll go into that first cell um, and right click, and then I'll do a paste special and just basically just paste the, the values. Um, for this particular example, our, our pre and our post development are, are exactly the same, so I'll just paste the same thing here for the post development. Um, but it's important that you specify for both pre and post development what your um, characteristics are. So um, up here is a little summary table that basically shows me what, uh, what the results of what I put in are. Um, however, all of that is carried over to the watershed characteristics page. And so this here is a summary of um, what, what we put from the um, GIS data. Okay, so I have um, gone through and I, I, I've input the data um, right here. So, like I said before, it's, it's, it's convenient that this uh, text in red here is, is brought forward over to this worksheet. And then, so really all I had to do was just type in the values next to the cells of, of, what, I, of what I was using. And same thing for um, this second catchment here. So now we have everything we need for the watershed characteristics and the model has automatically calculated that flow weighted average EMC value that we discussed earlier. So now we'll go to stormwater treatment analysis. Um, we're doing a modular wetland system, which is a, basically a filtration type of a system. So I'm going to go to the filtration button. Um, I've previously calculated what the capture volume was, um, and for each of them it was one inch. So that means uh, one inch on the average annual year of the, of the water will be um, treated with the, with the filter. Now we need to specify the media mixes that I'm going to use. Um, so if I click on this view media mixes button, it takes me over to this uh, media mixes um, worksheet. Um, for this example, I'm using um, some user defined data because I'm using data from a well preliminary data from um, actual uh, sampling. So I have 52% uh, 
for nitrogen and 60% for phosphorus for my user to find one mix. And my user to find two mix is going to be 37% nitrogen and 40% phosphorus. So uh, now I've, I've specified my removal efficiencies. Uh, this, of course, is a, is a conversation that needs to be had with the appropriate uh, regulatory agency. Um, but you know, once you get their buy-off, then, uh, then, then, then it's perfectly fine to use. So for, uh, for, catch, for our north catchment, we had user-defined mix one. And for our south catchment, we had user-defined mix two. And then finally, is this effluent um, filtration for a wet pond? Um, no, it is not. So we'll select no from the drop-down menu. Um, and then, so now we're done entering the information needed for the um, uh, modular wetlands. So we're going to go to stormwater treatment analysis, and then we'll go to catchment and treatment surface discharge summary to look at our results. Um, so we can see we have filtration in both the north and south catchment, two catchments in parallel, shown in the picture as well as in text over here, and then a summary of our um, pre and post loading, our, our provided removals, and then we also see that we met our objections for both total nitrogen and total phosphorus. Uh, at this time, we'll go back to the model.